Our next uh, speaker will be Carlo, and Carlo will be telling us uh, about uh, some hiking in VR, doing some tourism. Carlo, take it away. Thank you very much, John. Thank you to LB uh, Learning for giving me the opportunity to present uh, this application. Um, I, I start sharing my screen. Okay, uh, the application is uh, an application that uh, falls into the wide field of tourism, but actually it is also about uh, informal learning, learning through visiting a, a, an area, visiting a protected area that is uh, quite important. But just to put uh, the site in context, I want to uh, let you know that we are speaking of a very small uh, part of Italy, and uh, we are in Southern Italy, and uh, we are in an even smaller part of Southern Italy, that is uh, the tip of this peninsula. This is uh, Costiera Malfitana or Costiera Sorrentina. It's the south of Naples. Naples is up here, and uh, uh, it looks on the Gulf of Naples, where you have the Vesuvius on, on the back, and uh, this area is a densely populated area. Let's say that uh, we have more than 3 million people here living here, and not from yesterday, but uh, this area was inhabited since the Neolithic ages, 7,000 years ago. And the Romans, the Greeks before the Romans, uh, Naples was founded by the Greeks, everybody lived here and liked to live here. So um, why I am telling you this? Because actually this area is an area well known for Pompeii or Herculano. That were two uh, small towns, well actually for that time very big towns, that were uh, destroyed by the eruption of Vesuvius in 79 after Christ. Uh, Tourist doesn't come here for going around in nature normally. They go for coming to these uh, sites where they can find history and uh, a very ancient history, actually. But in the sea, you can find uh, wonderful fishes that uh, compare with the fishes or the invertebrates or the coral reef. These are actual pictures taken on the coast of, of this area, on the coast of the peninsula. And you have beautiful fishes, but also a very nice landscape that was shaped by the action of humans for 7,000 years. Here you can see the terraces where uh, olive, oil, olive trees uh, grow, and there is a tower that was uh, put there for uh, detecting the ships of uh, Saracen pirates that came from the sea uh, to uh, the, the coast. So um, the, the point is that uh, uh, this is a protected marine area that uh, uh, actually is, uh, is not the main reason people go there, but the marine area is very important. It was established by 1997 by the Ministry of Environment, the Italian Ministry of Environment, and it has a 40 kilometers of coastal line and covers 1,400 hectares. So it's quite big, but the point is also that uh, there, is, there are very strict levels of protection. Just to show you on the map, you can see the two red areas are forbidden to everybody. Nobody can enter those areas. The yellow areas are areas with uh, severe constraints. People cannot enter those areas, can enter those areas, but they can do a lot of things such as uh, landing with the boats. Whilst on the green area, uh, some activities are permitted, but also here with uh, some constraints. So the basic idea was to try to communicate uh, this uh, area, this territory. And for this reason, it was established when uh, the protected marine area was uh, created, was established a visitor center that uh, is aimed mostly to schools, 
and uh, pupils of those schools or the area to get them understand the biodiversity of the uh, area, to understand how to protect the environment uh, that is badly needed, uh, particularly in this area with uh, such a big population, you can easily understand why. This is why I am speaking of an application that is not just tourism, about tourism, but is also about uh, uh, informal learning, because the application is aimed to transfer knowledge to those uh, uh, school boys and school girls that go to the visitor center. The visitor center is hosted by an ancient monastery dating back to 15th century. Uh, so the, the, the site is not uh, uh, very technological from the perspective of the uh, architecture, uh, but we created a lot of free things in order to uh, marry technology with uh, uh, knowledge of the environment. This is, for instance, a game we created using Rectora about uh, the two different species of uh, seagull that uh, inhabit this area that you can find in this area. There is uh, the king uh, seagull, the gabbiano reale, and the gabbiano corso that is uh, smaller and uh, much more uh, um, uh, at a risk of extinction. So the idea was to um, try to uh, show places that are forbidden or difficult to reach. Uh, I will show you during uh, the demo of the product that uh, uh, even if there are paths for going around in the, in the, in the area, uh, some of these paths are quite difficult for people that normally walk, but anyway, they are mountain paths, not because we are on the sea, everything is uh, flat. Uh, the mountain is quite high and uh, the paths are difficult to go. Moreover, there are areas in which people normally cannot enter without a special permission. So the idea was to show those places and explain what you can see when you go through those paths, because you see a nature, but uh, uh, you have to understand which part of the nature was uh, shaped by man, which part belongs uh, to, uh, to the uh, original mm, flora and fauna that you can find in that area. And also describe the main features of the landscape uh, as a common, uh, is a common experience that when you go on the mountains, you look at the mountains and you would like to have someone who tells you which is that mountain, which is that valley, which is the name of that river. And uh, the VR could help in that uh, from that point of view because you can use this system also to understand uh, um, and uh, get a better grasp of what you are seeing at. Everything has to be done on a low budget, and this was uh, the biggest constraint that uh, drove uh, some of our decision about uh, technology and the way to create uh, the product. So the equipment, what we used to create uh, this application, uh, the camera was a Ricoh uh, Theta 5, a very simple one. The application was done in uh, 2020. So um, we are speaking of uh, devices that are not uh, of yesterday, but two years ago. And the Rico 5 was a very uh, simple and lightweight uh, camera that can be brought around very easily. This is from the perspective of this application quite important because we had to carry everything uh, on our backpack uh, up to the mountains, down to the sea, on the boat, and therefore the weight of the equipment was important. We used a cheap smartphone for delivering the application with the Scenario VR application and a headset on, in which the smartphone was inserted. Of course, on top of, of all of this, we use the scenario in order to create the application. So uh, I think that uh, the best way to describe what we implemented is to show you the actual application. Um, just a warning that the application has some timing inside because we wanted 
to have it uh, working in a semi-automatic way. In some cases, uh, because I am describing the application when, uh, while it is uh, running, uh, I had to go back to the previous point and then go again to the uh, skipped uh, point. So uh, don't be um, confused by some creaking that I had to do. First of all, when uh, we enter, this is uh, the actual application that was exported to um, HTML5. We supply some information. First, you learned Dutch. Now is your time to learn Italian. Um, the, the, the instruction give you some basic hints about the meaning of icons that we used. For this application, we used the standard icons that are available in Scenario VR library that is plenty of uh, nice uh, graphics. Uh, we put them in a quite intrusive way in red in order to let them them be easily recognized as, as a something that doesn't belong to the landscape. And so is to identify them as hotspot that the people must act on. This is already a VR uh, in a queer rectangular picture. This is uh, the path that we will follow. And we have inserted here a drawing that, uh, as you see, the timing of the system takes me back to the instruction because I was looking around and the system says, okay, these are the instruction act on something. And uh, the, the panel on which we want to act is that this panel that was drawn, or obviously uh, is not a, an actual panel, was drawn outside and put inside uh, the, the query rectangular picture. And here you have some hotspot that show you the maps or the path that we can follow for going um, in the, in the, on this peninsula, on this area. Uh, the eyes mark the point of sight that now we will see. And you have for each one of these paths, the map that describes the path. This one will be done by boat on the uh, sea. And this one is, uh, again, a, a path on land. So let's start walking and going down to the sea from the point we are. From Santagata, that is a small village, Namret, on the top of the mountain, down to Krapola Fjord, that is a, a strict uh, bay uh, on the sea. So we are teletransported in this point. We are at 375 meters above sea level. So we have already descended a little bit, but we are quite high over the sea. And we can look around and see we, how the uh, landscape looks like here. We have some point of interest, such as this one, for instance, that is uh, that describes the uh, dry stone walls that were done by peasants to take stones out of the land and to put them uh, on uh, on walls that mark the boundary of properties and also they get rid of those stones from the uh, from the fields on the fields they planted olive trees like this one that are still olive trees active, you can see the net on which olives are collected when uh, the season comes, that is uh, November actually. So in this period, the nets are open. As you have seen, we were taken to another point, but we can at any time go back to where we were. So we can see again uh, the olive trees and you can see the uh, cultivation. Now the area is nearly abandoned, but also the olive trees are still kept, but the area is nearly abandoned uh, because it is inside of the park. Anyway, we can continue along our path and go down. And here we are in a different uh, uh, section of the path. You can see that it is not an easy path. We came down uh, along this path. We have to continue along this one. And we can see the oak forest that covers part of the mountain, and it is typically Mediterranean. You have flowers that are 
red valeriana that is a typical Mediterranean plant. And you, we can continue downward and we arrive to a point of sight where we can look around and see the small island where we will go in the next path. And this is the description of landscape I was speaking of before. The fact that you look at something and the VR let you understand what we are, you are looking at, at least give a name to that. And so you have still some other information, like information about the plants that you can look at year round. Myrt, for instance, is another typical Mediterranean flower. And you have information and the picture to let you help recognize the, the flower. And you have, for instance, uh, the, I don't know the English name of this one. I think that doesn't exist. It's a Ceratonia Sigiqua, the Latin name. And with this information, we can continue our path downward. And we arrive to the small chapel of St. Peter. Here, the path is uh, better shaped. They have done some steps. And behind this chapel, there is a, an ancient Roman villa. So you look around, you recognize the mirth, and the system takes you back down, takes you down actually to the fjord. Uh, as I told you, is uh, timed. This, uh, this was a choice. I will show you uh, the application in scenario, and I will show you how uh, it can be done easily and also modified easily if the timing is not uh, correct for your purpose. We are on the bay at the sea level, and behind us, there are the shelters for ships, for boats, actually that is still used by fishermen. And uh, the VR lets us appreci appreciate the uh, path we did. We were on top of this and we came along a, a path that goes over here and arrives from here. And we arrived here to the seaside. And we can go back on the beach and then back, we try to transport us at the top of the path. The other path that we are going to is a, a path by boat. So we enter a boat and we go around the peninsula tip up, the, up to the uh, islet of Rigalli. Um, before we spoke about uh, uh, head-mounted camera or uh, movement uh, using the system. It's true that uh, uh, if the camera moves, uh, this could create some trouble to the person. So uh, as, as you've ever seen in the, in the path that we described before, we took pictures that were static pictures, and we teletransported from one point to the other. In this case, we mounted the uh, camera on the boat, and the boat, of course, moves themselves. Uh, and uh, we had to cope with the, the situation in which the camera is moving. But uh, keeping the camera steady and having the boat moving uh, creates less trouble because you understand that you are not you that are moving, but the uh, boat and everything around. Let's see how it works. We teletransport to the small harbor of Marina de la Lobra. We were on the top of the mountain here before. Now we are on the seaside facing north. There is a, a small village and we have the name of the village and the short description. And we can board, board the boat here. So we get into the boat and we are getting out of the harbor. We have other ship around us. And we decided to pen to the information when we supplied them so that people doesn't get lost on what is going on. But we are on the boat. And as you can see, 
here there is uh, the uh, shadow of the camera. Well, now we are entering the bay that is facing south. We make a long trip short. Uh, we explain that those uh, parts were used by um, uh, industry for, for taking lime. And there, there is uh, the tip of the peninsula, but we are entering a cave now. So we are entering one of the partially submerged caves that are on these uh, cliffs. These caves can be accessed only from the sea. And you can see here, we are looking upward toward the cliff. Here there is the cave we are entering. If we look backward, we can see the open sea. Of course, the boat cannot enter too much into the cave due to the dimension, but scuba drivers can enter uh, the, the cave, although it is quite dangerous, uh, must be careful. And then we are receding and going out of the boat and returning to point to Rigalli, that are the island uh, over there. And we are still on the open sea. We decided to take out the audio from this part, although it could be useful to have the sound of the motor, gives you a more uh, vivid uh, impression of what is going on. But uh, uh, considering the target, uh, the users uh, that were targeted by this application that were schoolboys looking at the application once, one at a time in a classroom environment inside the visitor center, uh, it didn't make too much sense to have audio that uh, was uh, quite disturbing. So we um, took uh, the audio off, and now we are uh, uh, we are arriving to the small island. This is a static picture in which we can look around to the sea and uh, find out the names of the different islands. This one was the biggest of the island that was inhabited by Romans since Roman times. And the Greek before them thought that here gave the, the mermaids that tried to cure Ulysses during his trip to Italy. The other uh, are called the island of pirates, where because pirates made a cove here. And the other one, the third one is a small and uh, the cliff are so steep that people cannot uh, dock there. So we can return back to our panel where we have the instruction and the last path that we can follow. And now we are on, on the path. You see again, it's not a too easy path that takes us to here to the tip of the peninsula. You can see the tower, the same I showed you in the picture before. Here there is a description of the tower and tell us how it was used at that time. Uh, we created also a trivia game uh, related to the VR that uh, schoolboys and schoolgirls can take after they have uh, seen the VR application. So they look at the VR application and then they do the trivia that is just a game for uh, with some question about, for instance, the use of these towers or the, the name of the locations. And in this case, we have a fork. Here you can choose to go down to the bay or you can go to the tip of the mountain. And if you go to the tip of the mountain, you are taken to a position from which you can look at the mountain that is on your back. And here there is, you see, the, the coast, we went down in the previous path down here, down to the sea. And here in the instance of there are the island to which we were that are legally. Here there is Capri with the Faragions, the Capri Island. 
and you can back to the fork and decide to go the other path and go back to the bay. This is Yeranto Bay. And uh, in the summer, you can uh, rent a kayak here. No motorboat is allowed inside the bay, but you can rent a kayak and going around uh, by kayak on, on the coast. Okay. Uh, we go back to the panel and uh, we can return back. And this is the application, very, quite short, very simple, aimed to a target that are school uh, pupils and uh, uh, also to tourists during the summer when no schools are visit the visitor centers, uh, the, the application can be used by tourists and uh, is open to everybody inside the visitor center. Let me go back to the presentation because I would like to show you what is behind this application, how it was done. I log in into scenario. Coming. I made a link direct to the application. I don't show you the other application, but uh, the, the, I don't know how familiar you are with the scenario, but I think that a couple of points are worth noticing of this application. Um, okay, it takes some time to load. Uh, one wait. note, Carlo, you're making everyone on the presentation jealous because now everyone wants to go to Italy. Pardon, say it again. I said uh, one note is that you're making everyone that's that's watching your presentation today jealous because everyone wants to go to Italy now. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> be my guest. I would be very happy. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. And I, I believe Carlo just invited you to his place while we go. So that's okay. There we go. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I actually I give. Uh, 800 kilometers from Naples, uh, and I live in northern Italy. But I really enjoyed doing this application because I did the I take the picture by myself, and I went there and I spoke with the people, and understood uh, the name of the places. It was very very nice. It was, it was quite a vacation, not actually a work. Uh, well, hold on, you can't course. say it was a vacation. You have to claim it was work, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't vacation, not at all. I was working the entire time. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, yeah. As uh, Stephanie told us before, it's nice to have some uh, technical trouble trouble during uh, presentation. Otherwise, uh, it seems a uh, fake. And now it takes very long time to uh, load the <laughs> scene. Yeah, yeah. My Let's wife tried reload, to, try to reload it. Now. We're just building up the suspense. Yeah, there you go. No, no, this, no, I, unfortunately, I returned to the already published application. No, I stop one moment of the sharing so I can load. All right. So you're in Northern Italy? Yes, in Milan. Oh, in Milan. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, it's an area I have yet to visit. Would like to visit there as well. Now, what yeah, got you started on create? What got you started on creating uh, this application for this this specific area? Is this an area that you had been familiar with in the past? Uh, they contacted me initially for making educational games using the Torah. And uh, we started working with them in 2018. And uh, well, they liked the, the educational game we created for on different subjects. And therefore they asked for something more in, involving, something more uh, complex. And we proposed to them to use a, a scenario for creating a VR application for uh, their site. It seems that it doesn't like to load. I don't know why. All right, and Christine has decided that we're going to be doing an offsite meeting in, in Brindisi in April. So, all right, there we go. We'll have to do an offsite. <laughs> <sighs> Wait. 
what a pity. I am sorry, but I don't succeed in loading uh, the the um, editing environment. It uh, doesn't seem it to work. Uh, I, I will uh, continue if it goes in, me, in the meanwhile, but I wanted to share with you uh, some basic uh, uh, idea that I have learned from uh, this application. Things that you have already seen, actually. So um, I, I want to point out the defects of this application. Um, first of all, automatic pen. I thought uh, initially that it will help user to focus action, uh, focus the attention on the action to be done. And actually it is this way because when you are on the arbor and you look around, it takes you, pen, automatic panning takes you back to the uh, hotspot for boarding the boat. This is useful for the uh, schools. This is useful for the kind of uh, users we are aiming to. Uh, I don't suggest to use it for a, a training application in a, a corporate environment. Uh, I think in the other application we created for our corporation, we uh, use a more explorative approach. Um, people have to look around, decide what to do, and at their time decide when to go to the next step or when to answer the question or when to choose a, a different option. Uh, Automatic panning is useful if you are a little bit directive and want to address the attention of person to a specific point. So be careful in using automatic panning. That is uh, anyway a resource you have. Use group to manage complex objects. This is uh, uh, very important. I would like to have shown you directly into scenario. But uh, a scenario that you group object, when you have a group like, a, you have a complex object, like the panel with the maps, the button for going to the different path, the instruction on the left, and the background drawing of the panel, well, grouping those objects that you treat all the uh, object as a single object, that means that you keep a specific action on the button on the maps, they are actual different objects, but the whole group can be moved and replaced as a single object that are, uh, um, saves you a lot of time and that's all uh, when uh, editing the application, because in some cases you want to move the panel into a different location and so on. And that's uh, uh, something that uh, we had to learn a little bit. Uh, Another thing that I didn't do and I should have done uh, was uh, edit pictures. Uh, as you probably have seen in the application, there was uh, in some points a red dot. That red dot was an artifact due to the reflection of the sun inside the objectives of the uh, camera. Um, this is not common if you are not taking pictures outside of, or if uh, the sun is not in direct sight or if there is uh, some cloud that covers uh, the sun. For this application, uh, we wanted to show the shining sun of Southern Italy. So we couldn't wait for a cloudy day. Uh, it will be a drawback actually. So, uh, we had the sun that entered the camera and created that uh, red spot. By Photoshop, I should have removed that uh, spot, uh, making uh, some amendments to the picture. Uh, I didn't do that, but uh, should have been done. And, and that's specific to that uh, Theta V camera. I used to have a Theta V camera as well, and that red spot was in every outdoor shot. Uh, but if you upgrade to a different camera, you won't have that issue. Yeah, sure. I agree. It's due to the fact that the two objectives are two fish eyes, and uh, one of them takes, in any case, the, the, the light of sun. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the, the low budget constraint reflects also on this kind of uh, problems. Yeah. Uh, other kind of problem, uh, John, in an 
different in a previous webinar pointed out quite clearly problem with lighting is always present when you create a vr application because you cannot hide light uh, it is the sun or it is a spotlight but anyway you cannot hide light when you create vr application so uh in cases like this one in which we entered the cave, we had a problem of exposure. The, the camera does automatic uh, balancing of um, gain for trying to get the better exposure. But if you have a cave that is completely back, black and the sea that is uh, shining with the sun reflecting on the waves, well, uh, compensation doesn't work too well. And you saw that there were some reflections, there were some uh, moments in which you cannot see the, the details or, or the cliff or uh, the details of the sea. So uh, quality is at stake every time you have uh, different levels of light in, uh, in your picture. And the last point, the last defect of this application, but it was intended in this case too, was that graphics was a little bit intrusive. Red doesn't uh, fit in the landscape we we created, we, we took the picture off. Um, but that intrusive graphic uh, let us use this application with uh, people that see VR application for the first time, they immediately detect what belongs to the landscape, what doesn't belong to the landscape, and they are able therefore to put the, uh, I, uh, side, the, the point of sight on the hotspot in order to get the action done. And uh, this way we, we tried to uh, simplify the use of the application at, uh, at the highest level. But it was created in six days, three days to take pictures. And uh, this was the most uh, challenging part because I had to go up to the mountain, down to the sea uh, on the boat. Well, it was a pleasure, but uh, uh, a lot of sweating, I can assure you. But also three days uh, were enough for creating this application. No storyboard was needed. Actually the storyboard was already created by the path so we uh, knew where to go and uh, which kind point of sight uh, um, where to take the pictures um, but in three days uh, we created the application putting everything together and publishing to html5 without any problem uh, as uh, john well, we said a, before a, we have a quick question it's kind of related to the taking the pictures and actually it's a really good question because i'd like to know this answer too which is uh how was the camera mounted when filming the 360 video on the boat because it was stabilized really good <laughs> well uh, the the trick was to use uh, the stick for taking selfies uh, and we put two of those uh, stick one on top of the other and there was a um, uh, I don't know the English name of that, it is a window on the top of the boat. And we put the stick outside that window on the top of the boat. And I stayed down and we fixed the, the basis of uh, this um, stick to a stable point on, on the table inside the boat. So okay. it was very stable. And the movement of the camera was, uh, the, was uh, completely rigid together with the boat. Okay. All right. Yeah, it came out great. It was a good, that was an interesting part of it. Yeah. Um, the application is ported to HTML5, worked perfectly on the smartphone. That was a cheap smartphone anyway, with the app and on desktop, as you saw before. And this was a thanks to Scenario, because otherwise, with um, without this wonderful application, we never could have done such an application in such a short time we decided not to use um, 3D models. We decided not to use uh, uh, um, artifact except the panel. Uh, we, we took the pictures and uh, put everything together. Let me check if uh, I succeed in uploading the application. Yeah, it is. Let's see if... I we succeed in entering the application. Mm. 
No. Sorry. Oh, yeah, no worries. Okay. Anyway, um, uh, if someone uh, <laughs> um, want to have a look to how the application works, uh, send me uh, an email and we'll be happy. Well, it's loading now. Um, but anyway, I will be uh, glad to uh, ask her to your email uh, and uh, give you a demo of how it was done. Okay. All right, Carla. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, that was very interesting. And I really, really, really need to go there at some point. I'll, I'll have to make sure that I do that. All right. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks.